ఆకర్షక మీరు ఇది ఎట్లా గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద టౌన్ హోల్ I am speaking from the territory of the Ketsi, the Semi-Amu and the Kwantlan peoples. I think that a lot of you will be joining us today from other territories. Michelle Mangal, Minister of Jobs, Economic Development and Competitiveness and Tom Conroy, CEO of the Small Business BC. We also have Nigel Howard providing ASL interpretation. A warm welcome to everyone. The ongoing pandemic has impacted all of us. A lot of people are struggling because of lost income, reduced social interactions, and the most heartbreaking of all is the loss of our loved ones. But even in the face of these problems, British Columbians have stood together with determination to stop the spread of the virus. We know the impact to small businesses has been significant and it has left many struggling to stay open as we take the next steps to slowly and carefully restart our economy the government is focused on keeping everyone safe we but they will answer the questions you have sent us and we'll try to cover as many as of you who were unable to submit your question earlier you may still do so in the comment section of the live facebook let's begin by asking minister mangal to start us off thanks very much jenny and i'm coming to all of you from my office in the legislature and the beautiful territory of the kwangan speaking people the squamalt and songhees first nations and i'm very pleased that we can do this town hall today uh one of the things and i'm going to talk too long i i, I want to make sure that we have a lot of time to get to questions i know there's a lot of questions i've been on the phones and in zoom meetings and zoom calls uh, from all over the province and uh, over the last 4 months talking about how this uh pandemic has impacted small businesses all throughout the province and uh working with people like Tom to make sure that we're responding to the needs of small business as best as we possibly can throughout this pandemic making sure that we create a good economic foundation from which to recover because we know recovery is something that we're going to have to do so we want to make sure that we have a good foundation in our economy that we can grow from I also um I'm going to take this opportunity uh just to say thank you to all the business owners all the employees out there who are tuning in right now the customers the clients everybody the reason why bc has been able to be so successful in reducing the spread of covid team is because all of you took seriously that we have a wonderful leadership in dr bonnie henry i mean absolutely wonderful leadership we all know that and we thank her so much we thank all of our essential workers i love going around in every community that I've been in which I wasn't many. <laughs> I've been mostly uh, at home in Nelson and now in Victoria wherever I go uh there's hearts everywhere on the bike paths in Victoria on the uh the the signs that say this is a bike path or a walking path and there's people uh, as for those symbols uh there's little hearts uh put spray painted onto uh those symbols. It's it's just magnificent to see the gratitude that people are expressing for our essential workers for Dr. Bonnie Henry for people in the healthcare system but I also want to take this time to say a huge thank you to all the small businesses out there the owners the employees who've taken this seriously who've done everything they can to reduce the spread of COVID-19 it's because we all take this seriously it's because we are all in this together that we have had the success that we've had in BC in reducing the spread of COVID-19 and as a result uh many jurisdictions are looking to us to understand how we did it so thank all of you for for all your good work i know it was not easy 
at all. And thank you so much for doing it. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to stop uh, my initial remarks and uh, guess more time for questions here, Jenny. Thank you, Minister Mangal. And uh, really, on uh, behalf of everyone, I want to thank you for the uh, all the work that you have been doing to restart the economy and get things going. And I know that you've been super duper busy talking with everyone because we want to make sure we get this right and we leave no one behind. So now I'm going to turn it over to Tom Conroy to share a few words. Thank you, MLA Sims and Minister Mangal for your introductions. Uh, I am Tom Conway. I'm the CEO for Small Business BC. And to begin, I want to acknowledge that I'm speaking today from the territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. Um, again, thank you. This is a great opportunity to speak to British Columbians alongside Minister Mangal. So I'm appreciative of this time today. As part of my role, role in Small Business BC, I get a chance to work closely with our province's vibrant business community. Small businesses truly are a vital part of our economy and our organization is proud to serve you on your journey to success. As Minister Mangal and MLA Sims noted, we are in unprecedented times. It pains me greatly to see and hear individuals, families, businesses, and our economy suffer because of COVID-19. Businesses that entrepreneurs took years to build from the ground up are now facing great challenges that we know are not easy to overcome. But we are here to assure you that we are not alone in this crisis. Small Business BC, we've been actively partnering with the province and the federal government to extend support to businesses to help them navigate during this difficult time. This includes uh, the BC Business COVID-19 Support Service that was launched in April. It serves as a single point of contact for businesses looking for information on resources available during this pandemic. And many of you have probably availed yourself of that, but if you haven't, I would suggest uh, that you check it out. We continue to adjust our supports as the situation evolves. For example, we just recently launched um, our PPE marketplace. So you can find vendors that can supply necessary non-medical PPE so that you can operate your business safely during the pandemic. We know that more needs to be done on the road back to economic recovery, and we are prepared to do what it takes to help get, get businesses back on their feet. Together, we will get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And uh, we appreciate all the work that small businesses in BC have been doing to support businesses in British Columbia. And I know that as I travel around uh, my uh, riding, I see our businesses really doing more than their part. So let's start with the questions we have received from people throughout our province. And we will start uh, with the first question, which is, what is the plan to support seasonal tourism and hospitality industry in BC until 2021? And this particular question is directed to the minister. Great, thanks, Jenny, and thanks so much for that question. And I know that this is a, a big topic for a lot of uh, seasonal tourism operators. The Riding Knife represent a uh, beautiful Nelson Crescent in the Coos. Big, big issue. We have a lot of seasonal tourism operators, some just working in the winter, some just working in the summer. And or a business owner might have a, a business for the winter and a business, a different business for the summer, providing a different type of experience because you can't ski in the summertime. Um, so the pandemic uh, meant that people are not traveling uh, nearly as much as they used to. One of the things we're doing for this season, though, I want to highlight it before I get to some of the other uh, supports, is really pushing uh Visit your own backyard uh, tourism in BC. It's safe to go outside. It's safe to travel to other communities in a respectful, safe way. It, we, it's really imperative. I was uh, just speaking with Minister Dix actually about uh, the importance of traveling safely. And if you want to take a vacation, uh, remember vacation safely. Uh, COVID. Uh, we don't want to be spreading COVID-19. We don't want to be catching COVID-19 and bringing it home to our communities. So you got to do it safely. And the best way to do it is closer to home. And so a lot of people might not know all of the amazing attractions that are in their very own backyards in BC. We have a stunning 
province. There's so much to see and do. And so we're really promoting all of those things, what you can do in your own backyards. Perhaps you've never picked up a, a rod to go fishing, but you live next to a beautiful lake, this person right here. And so that's an opportunity to do something different and really experience some of those local amazing businesses in your own backyard who are providing a, a really great experience doing some big fish fishing. Uh, so that's an example. But uh, we also need to make sure that so that businesses can survive, that they have cash flow. And that was a big issue that businesses were telling me right from the very beginning when this all started back in March is to make sure that they had the cash flow to survive. And uh, so one of the things, some of the things that we did right away out of the gate uh, was defer uh, taxes that are collected by the provincial government to September. Uh, we did uh, uh, rent supplements and additional benefits for people and small businesses. Uh, we cut uh, small bit or sorry, commercial property tax by 25%. I believe that's around $700 million back into the economy. And that's a flat out tax cut. Um, we've seen programs for federal government wage subsidy, for example, um, the uh, the rental program that they have. We've put on an uh, eviction for commercial rents. Uh, so we've had a lot of uh, a lot of different programs. And I know that uh, Small Business BC has a lot of good details. If you're not too sure about the, all the details, you don't have to ask me right away. Uh, rather call or chat with Small Business BC online and uh, they can get you all the answers for your business. So we've done a lot of those types of programs to help keep people keep that cash flow and uh, so that they can continue on with their business. Going forward, we uh, the Minister for uh, Tourism, Arts and Culture, Lisa Baer, is in doing numerous roundtables and really collecting that kind of feedback from the tourism sector to understand where they are at, what their needs are, what the federal government's responsible for, and where we can come in and fill in the gaps. And so uh, a lot of that consultation is, is it's ongoing, it has to be. Things are constantly shifting uh, in the COVID-19 world. And so uh, she's doing that and uh, working with that industry for solutions going forward. Thank you, Minister Mangal. So my next question is for Tom Conway. Uh, works, uh, how is compliance with health protocols being monitored with reopening of business? For example, hair salons. That's a great question. Thank you, Emily Sims. Um, yeah, we get these types of questions at our COVID support service all the time. Um, and we've been working since the announcement of the reopening phase one um, at, early on uh, with WorkSafe BC and the Provincial Health Office. Both WorkSafe BC and the public health officials have the jurisdiction to inspect work sites uh, to ensure that they have what they need to follow guidelines and to ensure they are in compliance. Uh, WorkSafe BC launched a verification and inspection initiative the week of May 19th. The purpose of the province-wide inspection initiative is to ensure that workplaces have a COVID-19 safety plan in place and that it's being implemented effectively to keep workers and customers safe. Uh, while a vast majority of workplaces are found to be taking the necessary precautions, orders are issued only if any violations are discovered. So um, if, if you don't have a work, uh, a work plan in place, uh, as Minister suggested, you can contact the COVID Support Service and they'd be happy to help you with that. Thank you, Tom. So the next question is for the Minister. You can see there's a pattern here. <laughs> can the provincial government apply pressure to the federal government, good news here, that I'll let the minister share, federal government to extend the Canada emergency wage subsidy and to change the criteria to meet the needs of seasonal summer businesses who cannot meet the baseline income requirements of January to March, as most small seasonal tourism and small seasonal businesses had no income or payroll in January to March, so were uneligible for CEWS. Uh, you're right, Jenny, there is some good news. And I was just looking down at my notes to make sure that uh, what I remembered was was correct. Uh, so first off, just before I get to the news, sorry, guys, I'm making you wait a little bit. Uh, the, I want to just go off on the, the question about um, can the provincial government apply pressure to the federal government? 
And I want to let people know that not only can we, we have been. Uh, whether you've heard from the Premier in the news about uh, the sick leave program and making sure that businesses aren't on the hook and therefore it be patchy, but making sure the federal government is taking up the cost associated with sick leave through AI, through whether you hear that, or sometimes you might not hear things in the news, but it doesn't mean that we're not applying pressure. I'm on the phone regularly with my federal counterparts talking about uh, what I'm hearing back from British Columbians about the federal government programs. And we have a really great uh, body that provides me with a lot of good feedback, and that's the Small Business Roundtable. Over the course of uh, March, April, May, and June, we were meeting every two weeks. Uh, for me to hear their feedback of how things were going on the ground for their own selves as businesses, as for their members, for the business associations, but also for their communities. A lot of these businesses are talking to people in their community, finding out how those federal government programs were working, how the provincial government programs were working, and getting that feedback so that we could adjust and that I could also provide feedback to the federal government. And I want to let everybody know that my federal counterparts were very, very interested, specifically getting that kind of feedback from British Columbians. And because they were interested, they were making adjustments. And so here we have some good news on the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. It was extended to August 29th, so going throughout the summer, uh, the busy summer months. And, well not as busy as we'd like them to be, I obviously acknowledge, but busier uh, than, than uh, has been in the spring. Uh, so, and then also employers business have been affected by COVID-19 may be eligible for a subsidy of 75% of employee wages for up to 24 e weeks retroactive from March 15th, 2020. So that addresses some of the concerns that people are having about eligibility and also extension. Thank you, uh, Minister. The next question is for you, Tom. And what do you think is required in order for business to plan for the future uh, and for the remainder of 2020? And how do you think this may be achievable? Thank you, Emily Sims. Uh, another great question. And it's, you know, it's funny because I, I think I don't think anybody can know everything, uh, how they can best prepare, but I can give you some points on, on what you should be looking for, I think. Uh, British Columbians and the, and the business owners that we've been dealing with, I, I have found them to be nothing but resilient um, and innovative in this, in this crisis um, and coming together to help one another, which is great. Um, now is the time I believe that businesses should consider reinventing their service and product delivery. Many of those who we've been in conversation with have done just that um, if they need to. Some businesses are able to continue their business model as they have been working with it. Uh, for example, uh, for those who are changing, restaurants have, have increased their takeout and delivery, and many small businesses have shifted to selling online, uh, and they hadn't done that prior, um, which is great. And then I also encourage you to take advantage of all the programs and supports that, that have been offered by the provincial and the federal governments. And, and just to speak to what Minister Mangal just said, too, about advocacy, Small Business BC is also advocating on your behalf to both governments. But we always encourage you as an individual, you should reach out to your own elected officials, too, at both the provincial and federal government, because no better advocate than yourself, too, in, in this. But, but, but be assured that we're working on your behalf as well. But do take advantage of the loans that are available and the tax deferrals that are in place. Uh, work with your bank to ease your debt load. Uh, and also, again, um, this may get old, but reach out to Small Business BC's COVID-19 support service, um, and you can check that out at covid.smallbusinessbc.ca. They can offer, my, my team can offer you advice on which programs you can access and help you set up uh, for a plan to move forward. Uh, Jenny, before we Thank move to you, the next question, um, I just want to toot um, Tom and Small Business BC's horn here because I, there, there's so much out there. There's so many programs out there. The idea of retooling your business, the idea of uh, looking at a different way to deliver the service or the goods that you're providing, your community, it's a lot for small businesses. And so I've heard from a lot of them saying, where, where do I go to get help on this? Small Business BC website is phenomenal. I'm hearing such positive feedback from people in the business community 
Uh, there's a webinar on, on any topic you can imagine, getting right down to the nitty gritty of details. Uh, and not only do there are there webinars, uh, there's resources online. But anytime you have a question, just get on the old Chatham phone uh, or the actual phone and, and ask your question. There's real people at the other end of the line in multiple languages, six eight days a week there to help you. It's a fantastic service. And, and uh, our government's been putting more money into it to ramp it up at this time. So I really want to let people know that there's a great service out there ready to help. Thank you, Minister. And uh, another example of collaboration and working together, because that's what Restart is. It is all about collaboration, whether it's different levels of government, us working with the business community. And I also want to say amazing. So, Minister, the next question is for you. Uh, small businesses have been at the mercy of their commercial landlord's willingness to apply for the commercial rent relief and the vast majority of commercial landlords are not participating, which is leaving our small businesses high and dry. What options are you considering to either fix this program with the federal government or to fill this gap provincially? Thanks, Jenny. Uh, where, where do I start on a particular topic? Um, this is something that uh, I personally, along with, uh, I know the Premier, I know the Finance Minister, Carol James, uh, Tom, I know you've been on the phone. I know that the heads of BC Chamber, BCBC, CFIB, everybody has been on the phone regularly with the federal government on this issue from the very beginning, from April, talking about how we need uh, a rent relief program for commercial businesses to help them with that cash flow. Uh, when we finally got the announcement for that program, uh, there was some concern that uh, it being a landlord rather than a tenant lord or no, or no option for a tenant led application uh, was going to result in a very low uptake of this uh, particular program. And it wasn't going to provide the help we were trying to get out there to people. And sure enough, uh, there's still that concern. And uh, to address that concern, our government in the commercial eviction ban. And uh, so there's a moratorium on commercial evictions. This is really incentivizing landlords to make that application to the federal government program and therefore helping their commercial tenants. Uh, that being said, uh, that'll go so far and I hope it goes quite a distance, but it won't go as far as I know we need it to. And so I continue to advocate uh, to my federal counterparts, they need to review this particular program, take a better look at it in terms of how we can make sure that we're getting people the help that they need. And I'm not alone in that. Uh, the same group of people I mentioned earlier are all on top of this as well. Thank you, Minister. My next question is for Tom. And Tom, this is a question that I get asked often. What can we individually and collectively as, commu as communities do to encourage and support small businesses? That's, that is a great question. And even during this crisis, me personally, and I know many individuals, uh, we've been supporting our local small businesses as they've been able to reopen and, and uh, in new and innovative ways, just because like personally, I wanna make sure that those businesses are around for quite some time because I like, I like availing myself of their services. So one of the most important steps we can do, uh, we can take is to shop local um, and make sure that you know, you're keeping those dollars in the community, keeping those small businesses uh, uh, viable and, uh, and, and using their, their, their businesses and their products. Um, you can also amplify your favorite business on social media. I did the same thing. It's very simple. You just do an Instagram post or a Facebook post, um, you know, or a, twit, a tweet on, on the business and uh, just share that you've been at that business and that you're supporting them because that just can be amplified. Um, take store credits instead of refunds. Uh, that can help those businesses to um, navigate through this challenging time. And choose to dine in or take out more often. Um, and, you know, you know, one thing that I do, too, is just I go directly to the restaurant to get that, uh, make my order. Um, I think I, I know that some of the services that are available are great, but I think they do take a percentage, too. So I like to try and help the small business that way, too, by just going directly to them when I'm making an order. And 
There are uh, the option to buy gift certificates now to use later. Uh, that's always a good option. Um, and also on our COVID support service, um, check out the, the marketplace, the Small Business BC Marketplace. Um, we have about a thousand businesses now currently on that site uh, that are operational that uh, you can you can access from anywhere in the province and help support them by type of business, by type of ownership, um, by region, by city, uh, and go through there. There's about a thousand right now with 72 communities and we are expanding that service. So I would check that out. And all of these little steps can really add up for small businesses. So, so do what you can. Thank Jenny. I just, okay, I, I can't. I can't resist here. Tom has been following all of my takeout Tuesdays. I've been posting every Tuesday uh, the local restaurant that I'm taking out from. My husband have four more restaurants in Nelson to either dine in or take out from, and we will have gotten all of the Nel all of the Nelson restaurants. And you know that Nelson has a huge eating scene. It is an amazing foodie scene. And uh, when I uh, was first uh, looking at the decision notes, so that's what we have. We have these decision notes and it tells us, asks us as ministers to make a decision on a particular item. And this has to be a funding item to expand the small business BC marketplace. So I'm doing my due diligence. I go online, I check it out. Well, I buy buying a few things. That's how awesome that website is. So please support your local businesses. There's some tools to help you do it. And uh, that marketplace, fantastic. It's one of them. Thank you, Minister. And I've certainly been following your posts and uh, uh, thinking about the wonderful food I've had in Nelson. You are absolutely right. Some amazing eateries. And also, as you know, some of the best shoe stores are in Nelson as well. That's, That's right. a well-kept secret. Anyway, my next question is for the minister, and this is about um, taxes, minister. Might there be tax breaks for small businesses for the 2020 tax season? Well, as you know, I said this right at the top, but I'll repeat it because it's always worth repeating, is that we uh, did cut commercial property tax by 25%. So that's a significant amount. And uh, so that's a, a tax, a permanent tax cut. What we've done to ensure uh, liquidity or cash flow for small businesses is that we've deferred other taxes. We've deferred um, the employer health tax, which of course is an important tax to uh, make sure that we're paying for a healthcare system at this time. Uh, but also all the hotel tax, the carbon tax, motor fuel tax, the tobacco tax, all of these have been deferred. Now, some businesses are worried that they still won't have the cash flow they need to pay those tax bills come September 30th. And I wanna let you know that there always has been and there continues to be repayment plans available to small businesses. And so uh, if there's, if you have any questions, uh, contact, uh, you can contact Small Business BC, of course, always to ask any questions to get some help around how to advocate uh, for yourself for a repayment plan. But also know that the Ministry of Finance is going to be willing to work with you on those repayment plans. We're not here to force people out of business. We're here to help them get through this. Thank you, Minister. The next question is uh, for both of you. So I'm going to let Tom uh, answer first, and then now uh, we'll have the Minister answer. As a sole proprietor, it's been very difficult coming up with new COVID protocols each time we enter a new phase. My industry, weddings, events, and videography, and I hear lots about this, by the way, in Surrey, is not currently described by WorkSafe protocols. Without a union or an advocacy group who can work with government on my behalf, it feels like I'm on my own. What support can the government provide to help me create return to work protocols? This is a great question because uh, uh, there's a lot of information out there. What it boils down to me is there's a lot of information out there where I go to get information specific for my business. And there's a lot of uh, advocacy groups like the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. There's BC Chambers of BC Chamber of Commerce, so your local Chamber of Commerce uh, for for Surgery Board of Trade or for uh, Vancouver Vancouver Board of Trade. There's also business uh, associations, 
and uh, Business Improvement Associations, pardon me. Uh, all of these organizations have information that would be able to help you. Uh, but I am going to direct you to Small Biz BC on this one to get that, that uh, detailed of information. There's also a 1-800 line with WorkSafe BC where you can get the information you need in terms of what you need to do. I know that it's a shifting landscape and it's, uh, it can be pretty frustrating. That's a shifting landscape. Uh, everybody is, is feeling what, what's new information today. That's how it's been going for the last four and a half months. And as a small business owner, it's incredibly challenging to not only have to get the new information of the day, but to turn around and have to implement new protocols so that you can do your job. Uh, and so I understand the, the, the stress around that and uh, the challenges around that. And just know that why exact, that's exactly why we have uh, people every day uh, for six days a week in multiple languages at Small Business BC to help answer your questions and guide you through all of those uh, changing protocols. And uh, so does WorkSafe BC, I will add. They also are there as a really great resource. Tom, did you want to add anything? Yeah, just a couple of little things. Um, and I know in addition to the WorkSafe um, 800 number, they have developed an app uh, that you can use on your mobile device too that can help develop your COVID-19 safety plan. Uh, and so the app will guide you through a six step process to outline your policies, guidelines and procedures to keep your workers and your customers healthy and safe. And then to play off of two, what Minister said about the COVID support service here at Small Business BC, one of the things we found originally for folks like uh, the questioner um, who's in the who's in an industry who may not have a large industry support, um, what we found is we set up these digital uh, meetups that initially we were meeting every day digitally um, in the in the beginning of the crisis, and each day had a new topic. But what I, what I found great about those those meetups was that it offered an opportunity for business owners to get together and commiserate, but also share good ideas to help one another out. And you can actually, the good news is, you can go onto the COVID site and um, our digital meetups are still available for download and you can stream them and look at them. I'm probably not using the right terminology, but you can open them up and look at those, check out which topics are of interest to you and might be related to your business. It might be about a cafe, but you might glean something from that uh, particular meetup that I would recommend that you go and check it out. And then do follow because now we are once a week for our digital meetups and, and uh, follow those and, and log in. They're every Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Thank you very much uh, to both of you. My next question is, um, my husband and I are self-employed and we work at home. We have two children, one with special needs. We've had to reduce our hours to juggle kids and we don't qualify for the 40,000 as many of our fixed costs are not eligible. Yet, we still have to pay them. Services to support my child are few. What is being done to support self-employed parents who don't qualify for $40,000 or other programs and have young kids? And Minister, if you could take this one, please. Yeah, you bet. So there's uh, quite a few things that we've done. Um, so I should mention that we're the only province in the country provided an additional rental supplement up to $500 a month for British Columbians who are in need of that. And uh, we did put in $1,000 uh, for emergency benefit for workers, and that's been accessed by over 550,000 British Columbians. But uh, we know that not every program is going to be able to get to every single person uh, because we all have our own stories and our own, our own lives. And so uh, that's why we're continuously adjusting and uh, looking at different ways that we can support people. And I really want to uh, just acknowledge that for business owners who also have school-aged children uh, at home and they were not able to go to school, the incredible amount of uh, added responsibility on them, not only for their business and making major shifts with their business, but also for having to support their children's learning in this time, like this was more than for full time work for a lot of parents uh, the last few months. And I, I've talked to several business owners in my home community in Nelson who are experiencing just that. And uh, I, I just want to take this moment to acknowledge how much that was for all of you. And thank you very much 
for taking that on and showing everybody the resilience that you have in that true British Columbian spirit that we all have in, throughout our communities. You, you really showed us and took that leadership through your own actions and what it took, what it means to be in all this together and to get through this pandemic. Thank you, Minister. And uh, I know that uh, you and we have other MLAs who've been carrying, and ministers who've been carrying out their responsibilities and uh, dealing with young children at home as well. So the next question is that uh, owners of small businesses that are still barely alive post the shutdown and are beginning to reopen are wondering what support there will be if there is a second wave in the fall. And this one is directed to the minister. Yeah, I think the thing we need to do is make sure that uh, the second wave, that uh, it's as, the curve is as flat as it possibly can be. We have to reduce the spread of COVID-19. That's why it really matters what we do now. Uh, we see low numbers in British Columbia. That, that, that does not mean to be complacent. COVID-19 would love it if we were complacent. The virus would love it if we were complacent because then the virus can spread. But we don't want to be complacent because we want to stay healthy. So that's why being vigilant is so incredibly important and why businesses need to remain vigilant, and they are. And uh, so back to the, um, the, the question of uh, what do we do to prepare and, and deal with a uh, second wave? Well, what we're doing right now, taking this seriously and reducing the, the spread of COVID-19 and taking all those serious measures, uh, important measures, that's uh, what we need to do right now. Looking ahead though, and what may be needed, I, I don't have a crystal ball, I don't wanna speculate, but what I do wanna say is that when I say we're all in this together, it's not just a nice catchphrase. It is truly a, a philosophy. It's a way of understanding how to get through this pandemic. And so if we need to take a look at uh, further tax deferrals, if we need to take a look at uh, further ways and we need to ensure businesses have that cash flow, we're going to be looking at those very seriously. Like I said the, earlier on, in, uh, in the town hall is that I'm in regular conversations with uh, small, our small business roundtable that is uh, part of one of our functions with government, but also with businesses all around the province, with uh, their associations as well, with uh, labor representatives. I'm in regular contact. We are uh, continuously talking to make sure that we have here in government a good understanding of what's happening on the ground and therefore what kind of responses we need to be uh, putting forward uh, should we have a second wave should, and responses we need to be putting forward in the initial wave as well. Uh, that being said, uh, we're also working on right now moving into economic recovery and we're not doing that uh, alone. We are doing that very much in partnership with British Columbians through the engagement process, which uh, ends July 21st. And I, I encourage everybody to put in uh, their views uh, for uh, economic recovery with that process. And I think we'll probably put that link up uh, online later after the end of the show. But I uh, one of the things uh, along with that engagement is uh, we're speaking with uh, sectors, all the sectors, all the economic sectors in British Columbia. We're speaking with business owners, we're speaking with workers, and uh, we're making sure that everybody is being heard and that as we move forward with recovery, we're not leaving people behind. Thank you, Minister. My next question is for Tom, and uh, it's got two parts to it. These have come in um, through uh, Facebook uh, today, through Facebook Live. The first one is, uh, where can we apply for small business grants for online, um, for online businesses? And the second one is, what are some of the supports available to help people start a small business? Well, that's a great question. Uh, both of them are great questions. Uh, there are many services that you can find on both our Small Business BC website and our COVID support website, both for helping you get started as a business. Um, 
believe it or not, even throughout this crisis, our team have been answering questions on how to start a business because there were many entrepreneurs who who didn't let COVID get them down uh, during this process and continue to want to uh, write a business plan or name their business or get legal advice about how to start a business or financial supports. All of those are available and more through our Small Business BC website and that's smallbusinessbc.ca. Um, check that, check out that site if you want to start your business. And for those who are looking to get access to the uh, provincial and federal supports that are available or to help uh, get uh, restarted, check out our COVID support uh, website. Uh, there are many, uh, many supports are available through there. Um, we are working with many organizations currently throughout the province and federally on uh, helping businesses get online. That's critical at this juncture. And we've been working with both governments on how we can bring that uh, to BC in a big way. So um, continue to look at those, uh, those websites because the best information will be there or contact our service. You can either call, um, as Minister said earlier, or you can also use the online chat feature or send an email and our team are happy to help you uh, that way. Thank you. Uh, my next question is uh, for Minister Amangal. How can government help improve access to wood fiber for smaller sized independent milling facilities that continue to operate in down times, invest in their communities and keep people fully employed? The forest industry is well suited uh, to help pull us out of this economic downturn with stable family supporting jobs. These smaller firms need better access to fiber to keep their mills operational. How are you going to help them? Uh, thanks, Ginny. So as you can imagine, we've been a rural MLA and uh, representing communities that rely on the forest industry uh, for many jobs. Uh, this is something that uh, I'm very concerned with as well. And um, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time to go into all the detail in terms of forest management, what we need to be doing and what our government has been doing. Uh, the Minister of Forest has been uh, working on this issue for the last three years. We're coming to uh, three years of our, our government's anniversary. But they, he's been working on this issue for the last three years uh, because under the previous system, the, the Liberal government, uh, tenure could be traded like hockey cards and often that really put uh, smaller operations out and they weren't able to access the fiber needed to keep that mill that with the family supporting jobs that were in that mill going. And so we've had to really look at the issue around tenure and we've been doing that through our legislation. Uh, we also need to look at some other opportunities uh, value added and innovation for wood products coming from British Columbia. A lot has been shifting. Don't want to get too far into the softwood lumber trade issues and, and so on. But uh, there's a lot shifting in the forestry sector uh, right now for British Columbia. And so you need to start innovating more. And mass timber really provides a great opportunity for us in British Columbia in terms of value added and innovation. And we need to start marketing that opportunity or the product that we have better yet is a better way to say it. The product that we have to other jurisdictions that are looking for mass timber. And one of the ways is that we start building our BC buildings with mass timber. And we actually have a policy and we're working towards uh, to do exactly that here in British Columbia to show the world that mass timber is a fantastic building product and that it works. And it's a sustainable building product as well. And so that's a, in a nutshell, <laughs> kind of what we're, we're doing here around the uh, opportunities for forestry. But I want to I want to thank the person for sending a question. in. that's a really important question for a very important sector of our economy. Thank you, Minister. The next question, Tom, is for you. And uh, it's one of our live questions. Will there be or are there business grants uh, available for people trying to find income? after being laid off? That is a very good question. And, and unfortunately, I don't have the answer at the top of my head um, regarding that those kinds of grants um, or loans or any type of financials uh, around that. But I would uh, reach out again to the COVID support service um, and they will be able to, to respond to that uh, with more accurate information than I could at this point. 
Thank you. And everybody, uh, the websites have been shared with you a few times. So please, please uh, use uh, those to get more information. So the Jenny, next, if yeah. I can, so if somebody has a question, if they've been laid off, not eligible for EI, and they have a question about where they can get income supports, I'm just going to let people know that they can call their local MLA office. Uh, MLA offices have a lot of this type of information at their fingertips and they'll be able to put you in the right direction, whether it's another community organization that can help you with applications uh, for different types of income support or whether it's directing you to um, a particular government uh, program, they'll be able to do that. Thank you for that, Minister. And uh, my next question is, uh, uh, okay... Uh, it's about um, paid sick leave. And this is specifically from um, a, a resident uh, who says that as a customer, I'd like to know the places I shop give employees paid sick leave so they can afford to stay home when they have COVID-like symptoms. Are you planning to let the public know who provides sick, paid sick leave and who doesn't? So this goes to the advocacy uh, all of us ministers, especially our Premier John Horgan, have been doing around paid sick leave. So it's very difficult for small businesses to be able to take on 100% of the responsibility for a two-week paid sick leave should someone have uh, symptoms of COVID-19 and uh, they need to self-isolate two weeks or they test positive and they need self-isolate uh, for two weeks while, or at least two weeks until they get better. And so that is exactly why we've been advocating quite successfully, I might add, to the federal government to ensure that they have paid sick leave as part of their EI program for this pandemic. And uh, they're, they're very willing to move forward. We've heard the prime minister say that that's exactly what they're doing. And so I anticipate a program is going to be coming out very shortly so that we can ensure that people who um, do find themselves either testing positive or concerned they might have COVID, that uh, their financial situation is not causing them to keep going to work, but rather they have the support they need to go home and get better and to make sure that we're not spreading COVID-19. No, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for that answer because uh, the advocacy that's been done by the Premier and all of uh, government has been really amazing. So the next question, it, it is uh, a little bit about the uh, landlord for commercial um, places again. And basically asking, are there plans in the future to make sure that the provincial government fills in the holes that exist in the uh, SECRA program from uh, the feds at the moment? I think you've answered most of this the last time, but this question came yeah. from Yeah, let me, let me come back to I it. I thought I would have you answer it again. Well, let me come back because what I'm hearing from, from people and what I'm hearing in this question is are, are wanting to know exactly where the responsibility for the federal government starts and ends and where the responsibility for the provincial government starts and ends and making sure that people have help. And so the federal government uh, is the one that's responsible for the program on rental, uh, commercial rental assistance. And uh, so they are the ones who decide on all the parameters around it. In terms of the ability to fill in all the gaps and, and uh, what those gaps may or may not be, it's not necessarily just easy for the province to, to do that because the, the federal government uh, is looking at the program all the time, monitoring it, evaluating it, and, and looking at where there needs to be changes. So if we jump in and fill in a gap one day, the federal government might can actually respond to that next day. And now we have built up a program that we have to dismantle or redirect. So it starts to become very complex. And that's a lot of taxpayers' dollars being used for administration rather than service delivery. And we have to keep in mind that this has to be about service delivery. So when we're looking at what it is that we can do around this that is going to be consistent no matter what, was to create an incentive for landlords 
to apply to the uh, federal government program because that's where we saw the biggest gap is that landlords did not have incentive to apply. Uh, rather, they could evict their, their commercial tenant. And, and I guess on, on a hope, have somebody else come into that commercial space. I'm not sure who would be able to do that in this current climate around not wanting to uh, travel too much and uh, everybody struggling for cash flow, but that was their perspective. And I understand what they're trying to do, it's, but it's, that was their perspective. And so what we did was create a ban. And that was the most consistent thing that we knew that we'd do was create a ban so that we would create an incentive for landlords to apply to that federal program because that was the missing piece. So far, we've seen that incentive been working. And MLA Sims, do you mind if I add just a couple notes? It's really wonderful. Thank, thank you. Um, we've been we continue to get those calls about the secret benefit uh, daily, and and in our advocacy with both the federal and provincial government, we're working on behalf of both those small businesses who who uh, ha- might be evicted, and those landlords too, because some many landlords are also small business owners, right? So we're there to advocate on both of their behalf. Um, I just want you to know too that. We at Small Business BC are a small business ourselves. And um, we were lucky enough to have our landlord apply for the secret benefit and we were eligible, but unfortunately we didn't meet the the criteria, which means that you have to have lost 70% or more of your your income or revenue in uh, in those early days. And that is a high amount. And I know that there are some businesses who that is one thing that they would like to consider maybe if the federal government were considering making any modifications, bringing that amount down because even a 50% loss of revenue during that time could be detrimental to your the life of your business. So um, keep plugging, keep advocating, and we will do the same. Uh, thank you very much for that answer. And uh, I think there is one question that's on the top of mind for everybody. And that of course is safety and how well BC has done. But uh, I do have a question about uh, uh, people being concerned about the border, but also uh, the impact a border closure is having on our business community. So we're looking for a comment from the minister on that. Absolutely. Uh, my community, the communities I represent are within uh, minutes or an hour from uh, the border with the U.S. And uh, so that's a big topic all over uh, BC and in particular for those people that I represent as well. And we have to find the balance to make sure that um, we're keeping people safe. That's number one. That's number one is we have to make sure that we're keeping British Columbians safe and that we're reducing the spread of COVID-19 in our jurisdiction. And with what's happening in the States, we see numbers increase of positive COVID-19 tests uh, every single day. We see an increase. We have to realize and, rec- and recognize, pardon me, we need to recognize that what that means is that COVID-19 is spreading in the U.S. We've reduced the spread and it's spreading increasingly in the United States. So here we have two jurisdictions different responses and different outcomes of COVID-19. And so if we're going to keep ourselves safe, we have to make sure that that border is uh, not um, permeable in the same way that it has been in the past, but rather we are allowing essential to come across the border uh, so that uh, our food sources, uh, PPE coming back up, uh, clothing, you know, the basics that we need, uh, that's going across the border in terms of trade. Uh, but we can't open it up to tourism, for example. We can't open it up to visitors. And reason being is that we just need to reduce our risk. And we have done that and we need to continue to do that so we don't see COVID-19 increase uh, in British Columbia. Thank you, Minister. The next question is for you again. Small businesses need to be responsive to COVID-19 outbreaks in their communities. Is there any thought to an online portal for sharing updated daily COVID numbers, 
developments in BC, perhaps by area? Uh, yes, so there's an app. There's a really great app. It was developed early on in uh, the pandemic, uh, developed by BC company Thrive. And uh, that app is available through the App Store. You can uh, get that downloaded onto your phone, and that'll provide you all the information you need, including the daily numbers that Dr. Bonnie Henry is releasing, uh, as well as information about how to uh, protect yourself and the type of PPE you should be using, depending on your health status. Um, we also, uh, Tom noted that uh, we have a PE marketplace. We also, for non-medical uh, PPE, we also have a supply hub that uh, businesses have been using for uh, medical PPE, as well as a whole host of other uh, supplies that you'd, you'd find along BC's uh, businesses' supply chains. So there's a variety of different uh, uh, sources of information out there for this and sources of uh, information for things you need to do to keep yourself safe. All of it's online. If you have trouble getting online, however, uh, I'm glad you're tuning to this online and you got an opportunity, but if it's not something that you can do every day, uh, I do recommend getting on the phone to your local MLA's office because they'll be able to make sure that you get that type of information daily. Thank you, Minister. The next question is actually from uh, someone in Nelson. Oh, so great. Due to COVID, we are, this is from uh, a company called uh, uh, Judy Malloy who works for Designs Brilliant. And uh, due to COVID, we are not in the market. What monies might we be able to access? And this is for Tom, actually. Okay. Um, there are not, and, and maybe I'm not understanding the question. Could you repeat that, please, Emily Sims? Uh, Judy Malloy here writes that uh, due to the COVID, they are not in the market at the moment. Okay. So are there any uh, resources available to help them uh, get going? Yeah. So if if they're they're a currently existing business and they want to access any any supports, um, depending on what they qualify for, I would recommend going through the COVID support service uh, again, either calling or chatting or sending an email uh, and they can help them navigate which supports would best be available for them if they want to get online. Um, there are several um, support services that have been started up in the province since this crisis. I've been surprised at how many businesses really aren't online at this point. Um, and so there, there are many, there are many, on the, there's a couple on the island. There are, are many throughout the province. And as I mentioned earlier, we're working with the federal and provincial government on bringing uh, that, that kind of support service here through Small Business BC as well. So um, if that's what um, they want to do is get online, that, that, that they should look for those as well. Our COVID support team can direct you actually directly to those others that are currently available. Thank you very much. And uh, I think we're getting to our uh, last question. And, uh, and this one is for the minister. This is from Kristen. I am wondering what supports are in place for children's overnight summer camps who cannot operate this season and our seasonal um, operations who have lost a full fiscal year of revenue. Child care centers have received funding from the provincial government. Will summer camps receive any financial support? Uh, thanks, Jenny. Thanks for the question. Good question. I know that uh, summer camps are really important for a lot of families right now. Unfortunately, I don't have the detail to provide that individual with an answer. I don't know if Tom, you do, but if you don't, I know that your staff would. And that's exactly why we've set up this service is because I don't always have all, all the information uh, locked away up in here as, as much as I try. And so we set up this service so we could answer these very specific questions. Uh, so, Tom, I, I'll let you uh, take that. Away. Thank Thanks. you very much. And uh, we are getting to the uh, end of our time together. But, Tom, did you want to add to that answer quickly? No, the minister answered it appropriately because I, not having uh, camp age children myself, I don't, I'm not familiar myself, but uh, yeah, I would check with our COVID supports. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we have covered a lot of ground today. And I want to thank both Minister Mangal and uh, Tom for joining us. 
and answering all these questions. I know they're both very, very busy, and uh, but to find time for this, for our dialogue, has been really helpful. I would also like to thank every British Columbian who has joined us from every corner of British Columbia, uh, and those who submitted questions, both online and those who sent questions in ahead of time. There is no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that British Columbians will have more questions as we move forward. And as you've pointed out, there are many online places you can go to. There are places you can call and your questions will get answered or people will find answers for you. Our government will continue to connect with you and we remain committed to do everything possible to support British Columbians in the very difficult time. As Dr. Henry says, let's do our part to continue to keep our curve flat and protect our communities and those we care for most. Remember, we are all in this together. And also remember that we are going to come out of this together, not leaving people behind. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.